Knock, knock. Knock, knock. Who is there? We are the women of the church. We are gathered here to look for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified and buried here three days ago. And we are here to honor him. Well, if that is who you are looking for, hear what just happened. A few hours ago before you women arrived, I see that there are many of you, there are some of you standing back there, and you are bold enough to come right here, knocking at the church door, knocking at the tomb, crying towards the tomb. Hear what has just happened. Shante. Yes. The reading comes from John. Lift up your voice. Your voice has to be higher tonight. The reading comes from John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Women and men of the earth, hear what has just happened inside the tomb and outside the tomb where Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified three days ago, hear what has just happened. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon, Peter, and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrapping lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached, reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their home. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying. One at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The end of the reading. Hallelujah. Everyone light your candle.
please light your candle. Is that CJ? Please make sure that you keep the candle where the kids will not step on it and light the house on fire. <laughs> Here is the good news, the Bible, the word of the living God. And Mary begin to read to us from Philippians. Announce where you are reading. Mary, can you hear me? Yes, please. Please read your scripture for tonight for us. Philippians chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. Okay. The end of the reading. Also open for us and read to us from John chapter 1. Begin to read from verse 1 and keep going. John chapter 1. From verse 1 and keep reading. From verse 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the life of men. And the light in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent 
segment of that life. That was the true light, which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, he gave them the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. Thank you. I want to thank you for giving power to scripture. I sometimes wonder, why do God and humans have to go through all this drama? Every Easter, every Christmas. It is to remember the Lord's death and his resurrection till he comes. Light has come into the world. That's why you've been asked to light a candle, to bring your candle, light a candle, and let your light shine. It's just as simple as that. Symbols speaking of physical realities the supernatural mingling with the mind and the physical. I ask that as many of you as are participating in this service around the world, that the power of God, His prosperity, help, his resurrection power will come upon you. Amen. God said to the children of Israel, keep the feast of the Passover in order to remember. To remember means to release power. To remember means to participate in who God is and what he said. So it's not just about a ceremony. The ceremony is to point you to what is real. Tonight, the Lord is risen and he is risen indeed. Without him coming out of the tomb. Christianity will be fake. There will be nothing like the religion of, the, of us Christians. Since last year, I was told what the new year of the Christians, our religion, what we have to ponder upon to carry with us 
till next year again. And it is Philippians 3, verse 9 to 10. I want to know him, that's Jesus, son of the living God. You heard what Mary read from John chapter 1, so that you know that you are dealing with the Messiah according to the flesh, with God, the Son of God, the second person of the family of divinity, who has always been in existence. People criticize our religion that we are celebrating the death of the carpenter. Yeah, he was a carpenter. Yeah, he mingled with ordinary folks, including the very wealthy. This morning, we celebrate our resurrection. His resurrection is your resurrection. What touches me in this celebration is that, what touches me in this celebration is that Jesus do not want us to live in fear of dying. Lucifer thought that by making human beings to disobey God so that human beings begin to die physically, because that was not God's plan for us, then he will use fear to keep us in bondage. Please let me make it very clear to you. Jesus entered into the land of the dead in order to get back things for us. In order to say, even though the law has been passed, that we will die physically because of the disobedience of our forefathers, Adam and Eve. But I'm going to give them back their life as spirit. We will have died as spirits. We will have been condemned as spirits. So let me make it very clear to you. If you did not know it, either you accept it now, or that's what you're going to see when you when you are living the earth, that you are, there is, there is a person inside you that is the real you. And that is the person that Jesus died for. And that is the person that is going to live eternally. And you have to be aware of this. That even though the entire package is you, spirit, your personality, your real self, your thinking self, your mind, and your body is going to be glorified. How is going to do those things? I have no idea. Don't ask me. I was not in the laboratory with him. He knows how to reconstruct stuff. I don't. What he shows me, that's what I know. What he does, and I don't go there. Tonight, we want to know him and the power of his resurrection. How was Jesus raised from the dead? The New Testament sacred scriptures clearly speaks about that Jesus said, I have the power to lay my life down and I have the power to take it back, to raise it back up. So that's number one, the act of Jesus. That's how he was raised. Number two, sacred scripture speaks of the Holy Spirit, that he was raised from the dead by the work of the Holy Ghost. That's number two. And number three, that Jesus was raised from the dead by the work of God the Father. That's number three. And let's look at those that were involved in his resurrection. 
the angels. So now you've seen four personalities, four beings that you have to look up to. For I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of Jesus himself. The power of God the Father and the ministries of angels. In the story we read from John, Gospel, chapter 20, verse 1 to 18. Thank you, Shante, for reading. And Mary, thank you very much for preparing and for reading. And Victoria, thank you very much, Madam General Secretary, for preparing for this service. Welcome. It talks about the women. In Luke, chapter 24, the women are mentioned. Mary and her sisters and the rest of them, there's a lot of them, and they all came to the tomb. Why we have the different, different stories, I don't know. Why that we don't have a unified story, I don't know. And I think it's possible that because some of these things were not written immediately, so there were, there were being um, uh, people, uh, the writers wrote as they remembered. And so you have the story being told from different angles, but the story is the same. Because in all of it, we see the women. In all of it, we see John and Peter running to the tomb. In all of it, we see Mary from Magdala, Mary Magdalene. In all of it, we see Jesus, God and Messiah, risen from the dead. In all of it, we see angels. So angels featured prominently. Women featured prominently. Fearful disciples were drawn to the tomb by the story of the women. Two stories. Number one, Jesus is no longer in the tomb. We went there. The tomb was open. We saw where his head rested. We saw the burial cloth, but there was no Jesus. It was the women who went and told the story that the tomb is empty that they may now run to. And they went and found that the tomb was empty. Then the women saw angels. That's another side of the story. And the angels told them, he's not here. He has risen. That's another side of the story. Then Mary stood there weeping because she didn't know where they've taken, it was a lot of confusion was happening here. Already he was put to death and now his body is missing. How are they, how is the world going to think about us? So she stood there, the men left. John and, G and Peter left and Mary stood there wondering what is going on here? First, everybody ran away, we stood here. We saw where they buried him. We saw the gaps. Now we are here, the gaps are no more. The tomb is on its own. The tombstone has been rolled away. Now, did they carry his body to go and bury it somewhere, dump it somewhere? What is going on? We see the story of the angels as testifying everything we are seeing this morning <coughs> is a testament testifying that he rose from among the dead ones that's all we are hearing the angels testify the men came and witnessed it the women carried the book in themselves <clears throat> because they were the first to see it, to see the empty tomb. They saw angels. Then Mary stood crying. What's the meaning of all this? Why is this thing becoming complicated? Why can't this just be straightforward? 
you see, what you're saying and what you're doing especially. Your action is going to reveal the intensity of who you are in the inside and outside. When Jesus saw that everybody left and she stood there, wondering, pondering, crying, then Jesus came. She didn't know it was Jesus. We now we are talking about, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. <laughs> Total transformation has happened to Jesus. Fully man, fully God. But in his glorified state, that does not mean that he wasn't glorified. Jesus can focus on you and you won't know that that is him. The same thing happened with the disciples on the way to Cleopas, on the way to Emmaus. Remember that Cleopas' wife was among the women that featured in the story of the, of the, of the, of the, the passion narrative and the resurrection narratives. People of God, listen very carefully. You don't share your love by just talking. Your action speaks louder than words. The women had more love for Jesus than the men. That's why God has instructed me, whatever I'm going to do in life, I must always involve the women. The men were up in the upper room not wanting to be arrested and put in jail. The women this morning went to the tomb. If they will be arrested, let them be arrested. They didn't care. See, women are always very intellectual. And women add intellect to energy and to passion. And I can see why they are the ones who are allowed to nurture us to become human beings. Jesus said, woman, who are you looking for? And Mary said, I'm looking for Jesus of Nazareth. Just as Victoria played that part at the beginning of this service, of this early Easter vigil and Easter Sunday morning service. We are combining both at the same time. I'm looking for Jesus. He's my Lord, he's my God, he's my everything. If you know where they've taken his body to, can you tell me so that I can go there and get him? Think about that. Even in death, she loved him. The men came to testify of the empty tomb. The women were not satisfied with the empty tomb. They wanted to see the man, whether in life or in death. And Jesus said, now you've proven who you are, that you love me. Here am I. He has paid names for those he loved. Call her Miriam. She turned around, she knew that voice. I'm here. The power of his resurrection. I'm here. I am risen. I allow myself for all this to be done to me so that I can give you back everything that you've ever lost as a human being. I'm here. I'm not dead anymore. I'm not in that tomb. Telling us the tomb is not our resting place. 
I hear many of you talks about, oh, let me die and go and rest. God help you. I'm becoming so old. I need to go and rest. Are you serious? You are not going to rest. You're going to start the fullness of your life if you did not start it here. What we are experiencing this morning in the readings is what we call the drama of God. I have asked myself, why do God have to go through all this? His son has to be born. God, the second person of the Trinity, has to die, has to be raised from the dead, has to go through all these toils and pains. Why can't God just raise his hand and just say, forgive human beings? Why? And the issue is this. When it comes to us, when it comes to the devil, when it comes to the demons, when it comes to the planets, everything operates according to laws and courts. Somebody will accuse God of not being fair, of not being just, that God was kind to us humans, but wasn't kind to them. I want you to be aware of this. And because there are laws that are written, the laws of blood, the laws of life, and what will happen when you abandon life, what will happen when you rebel, it's all there. So this has to happen. Jesus went through all of this, went through suffering and death. In, it, it's for us. It's not for God. It's for us. His death is a testament against the principalities who rebel against God. See, God called us God made us in order to love us. He did not, he made us as a challenge to those who rebelled against him. And those who rebelled against him came to entice us to rebel against God. Tonight, we want to know him and the power of his resurrection. The same power that run in Jesus will begin to run in us from now on. The power that raised Jesus from the dead. The power of God the Father. The power of himself, Jesus. The power of the Holy Ghost. The ministries of angels must run in us. The testimonies of the women and the men must run in us. The presence of the glorified Jesus must run in us. Let me give you a little bit little chocolate here about what it means for us to know him and the power of his resurrection. You see, after the resurrection, the door will be closed and Jesus comes in. The practice of appearing and disappearing. The practice of bilocation or triple locations, whereby you can be in one place and then you can show up in so many other places at the same time. I have seen that happen to me several times that it shook me. I can be here in this office. The Lord will take me by the Spirit also physically to a different country. These are real. This has been practiced since ancient Christianity is not witchcraft. You see it happening more in the life of Jesus. You see Jesus baking bread and fish and calling the disciples to come and have to come and have breakfast. Different things began to happen. The power of God began to show up more in the history of our religion after the resurrection. Miracles, signs, and wonders of special kinds began to happen. 
That's what the good news is about. What Jesus was doing before the resurrection and how he's living his life after the resurrection and how he is living his life now that he is up there is what we are to pursue. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. I want to know him. Who is he? What power runs in him? And that's what we want. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I ask that this Easter will bring you great joy. Joy to the world, not just in Christmas. The joy that started in Christmas, we continue today. I ask the Almighty Father, our God, our honor, whose children we are, to bless you, make you fruitful, multiply you. Him who has called you to reign must also open doors for you to rule, to dominate, to subdue to replenish. The Lord opened doors and opportunities for you that there is no power that can shut it down. I ask that this early morning that the power of Jesus will shoot through your physical body, healing you, giving you prosperity. Eternal life has already been granted to you. From now on, the devil has lost you. You are no longer in their book. Neither are you in their system. Hallelujah. Please, I'm begging you. Hallelujah. Believe this. Accept this. Hallelujah. Know this. Hallelujah. Know this for sure. That this is you. who you are. And this is the lifestyle you've been called to live. Please, stop coming down the ladder to come and eat with chickens. Stay up there and eat with angels and with eagles. Stop hunting with the lesser animals. Go and hunt with the lions. The Almighty God bless you, the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit on this day of the resurrection. Your life will never be the same again because you know him and the power of his resurrection and that same power is running through you. Eternal Father, make this happen. Raise for me on this day of the resurrection. Raise for me millionaires and billionaires. Raise for me gurus in real estate, bankers, people at the top of affairs of this earth. Plant your government now. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And to thy name, be the honor and glory, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Happy Amen. Easter, everybody. Wish everyone happy Easter. Happy Amen. Easter to you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you all, men and women around the world. Happy Easter. Thank you very much for sharing. We now go home to tell the good news that the Lord is risen. And he is risen indeed. Therefore, therefore, you now have a God. You have a God. You have a God. And his name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you.
Regina. Thank you.